October, Friday the 13th, marks the beginning of the Galactic Moon Festival for SWG Legends. Not only are Galaxy residents seeing the return of frightful activities in Moss Eisley, Monia, and the Dead Forest of Kashyyyk, but are enjoying new content and updates to the wider game. Let's take a look at what to expect for this year's Ghoulish Celebration and the significance of the October 2023 development update. Like in the June 2023 update video, all of the pages I'm showing will be linked in the description of this video so you can find detailed information for scheduled times for events. First, starting with the event itself, the Galactic Moon Festival has a lot of returning features such as trick-or-treating and the event's reward vendor in Moss Eisley, Monia, and the Dead Forest. New Zosferatu rewards include Droopy McCool plush and Guys of the Jawa if you want eyes looking like a Jawa. If you spend 900 tokens, you can unlock a collection and a title, the Galactic Fool. There is also a reward returning to the Verney Island event vendor Key Pass, which is the Essence of the Moon Festival painting. It's quite a large painting, but also quite beautiful. It's only attainable on that vendor during the Galactic Moon Festival for eight tokens of gratification. The Moon Festival Dianoga Dumpster is available once again to players. Players who did not obtain this item originally in 2018 can use the command for slash claim to redeem the dumpster until the Galactic Moon Festival ends. If you need a reminder on how to participate in festival activities and find these rewards, make sure to check out the Friday feature linked in this post, which goes over the basics of trick-or-treating and redeeming rewards from Zosferatu. The next section of the event page is regarding the October 2023 development update, which we will be covering at the end of the video, which has updates not only related to the event, but the wider game as a whole, so look forward to that. Next, we're reminded of what's going on in the Dead Forest besides trick-or-treating. There are new riddles to participate in for a unique reward. You can also participate in the Ghost Raid Tree event, which you have the opportunity to get one of four paintings. The paintings available this year are Spooky Painting Style 17 through 20. One painting can be won per galactic day, though, so if you participate in one of the raids to get the painting, you'll have to wait for the next day to get another one. The Almighty Chubafly is making a reappearance. This is a creature that moves around to different locations within the event areas. If you interact with the fly enough times, you'll be able to complete a collection and get a cool item out of that. Check the SWG Legends wiki for information on what that item is, and check the SWG Legends Discord for waypoints players have reported seeing the Chuba Fly at. Again, it moves around every hour, so you're going to have to be doing quite a little bit of driving around between point A and point B to complete this collection. Next is a very exciting section. It is the live events and community contests section. There's a lot of things happening this year, so you'll make sure to want to check out this section for yourself and see which ones you can and can't make. Starting at the top, we have the Galactic Home Show contest where players are going to be submitting their best spooky homes and decorations to win a prize. And this prize is the first of its kind and the developers have yet to show it, so that's something to be interested in. Make sure to click through to find more information about that. There's the 13 Ghosts of SWG Legends. It sounds like a space-related event, however, there's still information pending regarding this one, so we'll have to learn about that one later. The Swim of Demise and the Dead Force is returning. It is basically a swimming race through the Dead Forest. Anyone can participate in it. Legends Galactic Pet Show will be occurring. It is basically a pet show contest with three different categories to enter. Uh, not combat-related. These are all... Uh, dressing up your pets, getting your pets to do certain routines kind of categories, which fun rewards. We also have Jabba's Menagerie of Mayhem occurring, which is going to be an unscheduled event appearing multiple times throughout the Galactic Moon Festival. Effectively, Jabba is going to be releasing monsters in the set cities and locations around the galaxy. You'll find out if you're in-game and see the in-game announcement. If you go there and participate, it's a Slayer event, so you want to show up and slay as many NPCs as possible. If you're there at the end of the event, you'll get your token of gratification, but also there will be a word of the day posted in the game. If you take that word of the day and go to the thread for the event and post it there, you can get extra rewards if you're the first three, I believe, for that day. So keep a lookout for that. The pumpkin conundrum is uh, returning, which is basically the scavenger hunt where you look for pumpkins. However, it's a little bit different this year. Instead of a pumpkin being spawned in, you find it and then report it. It's now that pumpkins are going to be released into the game over a period of time, and you're going to have to count them all. What All the pumpkins should be released by, I believe, midnight October, or that's when they start releasing. And then your final count has to be in by Wednesday, November 8th. This is also a fun event for a new reward, so people like driving around looking for those things and keeping track. Something to look forward to. 
N another slang PVE event is Wado's Trick or Trivia. This will be happening on Sunday, November 5th. This will be having players follow Wado throughout Moss Espa, and he will be rolling a chance cube. If it rolls blue, he asks a trivia question. If it loads red, uh, rolls red, you're going to be fighting some monsters. So be prepared for that. That'll be really fun. We have Capture the Madness, which is a screenshot event. Every week, uh, one screenshot submitted to the thread will be deemed the winner for that week and they'll win a prize. So make sure to be taking the scariest screenshots you can possible and posting that in the thread weekly to have a chance to win a reward. And finally, we have the Spooky Scalibration, which will be happening on Sunday, November 12th, right before the end of the event on November 13th. This will be a party on Tatooine, and Jabba will be also turning it into a bit of a PvE blood sport. So if you like dancing and slaughter, make sure to show up for this one. The next biggest announcement is that the Aqua Min Heroic Instance has been updated to be spooky. As I like to call them, it is the newest haunted heroic. It is going to be featuring new unique looted rewards. Some players have already reported these awards, which includes the Death Awaits painting, the Vorpal Derny Hunting Trophy, and the inactive infinity coil or the wine bottle opener because Mandalorian wine bottles are really that difficult to open. Moss Espa and Lost Star Destroyers uh, Haunted Heroics are returning as well. So if you missed out on those last year or in the previous years, make sure to check those out. The same lo looted rewards are available from those. Keep in mind that once the Galactic Moon Festival ends, these haunted versions of the instances will be no longer available until potentially next year. Similarly, the normal heroic versions of these won't be available until the event ends. Moving on from the event itself, this is the development update for October 2023. It has some really good notes about the Galactic Moon Festival itself, including changes, updates, and other information at the top. I recommend checking that out on your own time, but we're going to move right into the Senate resolutions, as there's a lot of big changes that have occurred thanks to these. First of which, Wookiee players can now teach non-Wookiee players how to craft bowcaster schematics through the teaching radio menu. This kind of works the same as teaching somebody a language, except now it's only specifically Wookiees can teach non-Wookie players how to craft bowcasters, because for the basically entire existence of the game, only Wookiee weaponsmiths could craft bowcasters. And the problem of this is there's likely a very limited supply of Wookiee weaponsmiths in the galaxy. So this will help move that around. Or maybe somebody has a weaponsmith already that isn't a Wookiee and they have a Wookiee and they don't want to double up or move those characters around for roleplay reasons or whatever. So that opens up. I think that's great as a Bothan weaponsmith. I can get somebody to add more schematics to my list. Uh, the other big note for a trader is that a lot of the manufacturing crate quantities have been increased. This includes um, a major one like Camp Deeds, so that's been increased from 10 to 25, and Pet Food from 25 to 100. So this is going to make inventory management and storing those things way easier. Uh, moving right along, we're actually going to skip down to Medic, which probably received the next most significant update out of the Senate resolution section. The first of which being a quality of life improvement, being that the Medic revive user interface will no longer overlap with each other. So if you're doing PvP, sometimes you could have the Medic in your group offering a re revive and maybe a Medic in another group you hit you with an area revive and you'll now have two revives stacked on top of each other making it difficult to click certain ones, maybe not setting somebody else's on cooldown who you don't want to put on cooldown, etc. This is a really good change, but even bigger is that healing priority for area of effect heals, so that these like back to spray and back to grenade have been added. So while the AoE healing rules have not changed, the priority is the following. When you do an AoE heal now, it will first check to see, hey, do any of your group members need to be healed? No? Okay. What about any of your guild members nearby? No? Okay. Any allied players? No? Okay. All right, now we're going to start healing pets. Previously, if you threw out an AoE heal in PvP, like a big PvP situation, if there happened to be a lot of pets, they could be taking heals that a player could have gotten because the AoE heals aren't an infinite number of targets. It's a limited quantity. Or maybe you're healing people outside other groups. I've been in situations where I've been in PvP with my medic. I hit back to spray hoping to see my team all start healing up at the same time and then none of them receive any of the healing. It's a pretty frustrating experience, but this should make it more consistent. So that's a really nice change. Another major change, especially now that we have the event going on, is Storyteller Blueprints have received an additional save and deploy method. 
This method is going to allow players to save exact coordinates of where storyteller items are and deploying them in the same coordinates. So basically, if you're a mayor and you really like setting up storyteller stuff during events, you can put that down, then save that in exact coordinates. So then for the next event or next time you deploy it, you can just slam them down. You still have the option of using the old blueprint offset method if you're used to that or prefer it. But this should significantly help players save time with redeploying and refreshing their storyteller updates for all the events that they may or may not participate in. Lastly, I do want to note that the YT1300 familiar luck buff has been increased by 10 points. This raises it from 40 luck to 50 luck. I believe the thought here was that after the familiar update where generated familiars have 40 points to two stats, the YT1300 familiar only giving 40 points to luck was underwhelming. So to make it a little bit unique, they gave it an extra 10 points for 50. So technically having the YT1300 familiar for something where you're trying to optimize luck, like reverse engineering, is now optimal. 10 luck's not a lot of luck, so if you don't have one, I wouldn't worry about it, but cool. Next, we're going to go into additions and bug fixes, not necessarily related to Senate proposals directly. I'm not going to be talking about all these because some of them are pretty minor, so check them out yourself. But one that's big relevant to me is that there has been some updates regarding creature taming. Most specifically is that baby animals in the wild will now stay close and follow their parents. This is going to make creature taming much more difficult, specifically if you're taming very hostile creatures like chemogillas or even snakes. A lot of snakes like vine rolls, hyper aggressive. So being near the parents is going to make that a little bit more tricky. Similarly, if you're taming creatures that are quite large, like fambas with really big hitboxes, having the babies near the parent might make it harder to drop food or interact with the baby. I haven't tried taming since this update came out, since it was released this morning, but I'll have to play around with it and see how it feels. Next is crafting, which is a huge, huge update, which is really nice, which is in the schematic crafting window. So when you have the schematic open for, say, your weapon and a crafting tool or in the data pad, it will now show the statistics of the item in the description, such as like elemental bonuses re receives or damage bonuses it receives. Similarly, limited use schematics will now show the uses remaining as part of the schematics name in the tool and in the data pad. So if there's one use remaining of it, it will show one in the title. If there's two, it will show two and etc. This is a really nice quality of life change, and I'm very excited for it as somebody who deals with a lot of limited use schematics. Next in quest and dungeons, uh, most notably is that Java has now a place to park a sail barge. Some of you may recognize this garage facade from other Star Wars material. No, the door doesn't open, so you can't go in, but it looks very nice and it's cool to have and it helps make the place more in line with other Star Wars media as Jabba's palace has looked different. So it's nice to see that we're trying to close the loop on that a little bit and make it match up a little bit more. Uh, maybe most importantly, <laughs> most important to me is the um, mission critical objectives in the wild should no longer spawn in unreachable places. If you've ever watched me on stream doing the underworld prestige smuggling missions where I have to go out and find a container that gets spawned in the world, there's been a few times specifically on Yavin where the container will spawn in a tree or a rock and I just can't reach it and I have to dump the mission and get another one. So this is really nice and hopefully it will save me lots of time. <laughs> um, moving on to space, space has two updates here, but one a little bit more of a footnote. The other one's really massive, uh, in, in my opinion. Uh, the smaller one is that tier six convoy crate rewards has been limited to one per account. And by this phrasing, I believe they mean that if you are doing a convoy and in your group, you have some of your alt characters. So say I'm logged into character A and character B and I complete that convoy, that tier six convoy specifically, only character A will get the reward. Character B won't. The intended part of this change is to stop people from using their alts to farm more convoy crates, I believe. But the bigger one is that loot space components will now have their stats automatically colorized to indicate their quality. So for anybody who is a spacer, you're likely used to using a text file provided and maintained by the community that you could generate in game using some commands and then read it, it's referred to stc.txt. That's how I was been appraising a lot of my looted ship parts, but now there's a new system in the game. And I'm going to move over to the wiki page here and show you what it looks like. 
So if you go to the Star Wars Galaxies Legends Space Loot Evaluation page, you can learn all about this feature, some of the methodology behind it. The idea behind it is that it will reduce the amount of time you spend in-game checking stats against whatever charts or measurements you're using. In-game, it will appear like this. So you'll see that Space Loot uh, part evaluation is on. It will show you information about that evaluation, the stats range being used, and then it'll highlight it in the description. You can also get multiple colors and you have it color coded based on tier. So in this example, this base part has A tier, B, C, and D ranking. And you can learn more about that from reading the ship loot evaluation page itself. And probably best of all is that since it's managed through a simple text file in your Star Wars Galaxies installation folder, you can change those ranges if you want. So if you're looking for very specific say an armor 10 value like hyper low mass or something or maybe something that's more difficult to quickly parse like shield 10s you can just easily modify those ranges to what you want to do using the instructions of the user modification section and you can easily scan stuff like that uh, i'm really excited for this feature as somebody who one of the reasons i don't do more space content is i just get tired of all the inventory bloat and then checking all the stats and while you start to memorize a lot of the thresholds and um you know what's junk and what isn't junk i just don't commit all of it to memory and so it takes me a while to go through you know if i have 50 boxes of convoy crates it takes me a while to get through this so this is a really nice quality of life implementation feature i really appreciate that one but let's go back to the patch notes all right, moving on from space, the Darksaber now has a new look. Um, I'm not, I haven't seen it yet. I don't have one, unfortunately, to show off. But I'll be looking forward to seeing what that looks like. Maybe the lighting has been adjusted, as that's usually the criticism I've seen about it. Uh, dodge animations have been added for two-handed uh, weapons and lightsabers. Specific, well, two-handed melee weapons. I honestly didn't know they didn't exist until now, so that's cool. Um, also, the particle and sound effects of the Briar Pistol and TL-50 Carbine have been updated. Uh, I actually have footage of the old versions, luckily, so here's a comparison of the old ones and the new ones. Moving on, uh, there are some cool Storyteller updates, specifically that the Storyteller race droid has had their stopwatch fix. So if you're using the stopwatch or if you're using this race droids, the race times weren't always properly calculated. Now they should be and the persist wands that you get during events should work on the droids. So they should last longer. Also, I didn't mention it earlier, but it is at the top. They have added a new combat NPC storyteller token for undead rancors. So now you can have undead rancors as part of your storytelling and just in time to decorate for the Galactic Moon Festival. Very cool additions. I'm going to move down to the clothing here. So there's a few jackets that have now been changed to allow bracers to be equipped while being worn with them. Here's an example of the tight jacket. You can see my character's successfully wearing a rebel assault armor bracer it's really nice to seeing old clothing like that be updated especially because i would say all four of these the fact that they can't have a bracer didn't really make sense in the first place so glad that they can now opens up more variety of options also just in time to maybe mix and match for the spooky time of the year next is a great fix which is the entertainer second chance heal uh, is fixed previously what it is is second chance is an option in the build a buff that entertainers can give players that when struck they will heal an amount chance of that occurring was at start six percent but like other entertainer buffs if you commit more of your build a buff resource to that item it should have an increased chance of occurring up to 24 percent unfortunately that wasn't properly calculated so if you put in one point to get the 6% bonus, going all the way up to 24%, you weren't actually in that 21%. That should work now. Awesome change. And lastly, we do have some cool UI updates, which I always love seeing updates to the UI. Notably that the in-game event browser is available from the Newsnet terminal. So if you go up to Newsnet terminal, say in a starport, there will be a button to visit related form posts on SWG Legends in your web browser. When you click that, the game will open up whatever your default web browser is and navigate to that page. It won't open the in-game web browser. It will open up another thing, so keep that in mind if you're not playing in windowed mode already. Lastly, they fix an issue with ITV sometimes causing uh, you to be unable to travel points on the map. I've gotten this a few times. Usually only traveling via another method fixed it, so 
happy to see that one fixed. That's all the new hottest information about this year's Galactic Moon Festival and October 2023 update. I'm excited to enjoy the seasonal activities myself and litter my city with Undead Rancors. If you want to join me during the spookiest time of the year, don't forget to follow me over on Twitch where I stream Star Wars Galaxies regularly. I'll be getting groups together for the Haunted Heroics, in-game events, and other bone-rattling activities. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment what you can't wait to do in this year's Galactic Moon Festival. Until next time, stay hungry.